Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. And in this video for Ragnarok Origin, we are going to talk about the class tier list after the release of Genetic and Shadow Chaser. Many of you guys like to know what's in and what's out of the meta. So I'm here to share my thoughts on the current Ragnarok Origin patch. As we all know, all third job classes were already out, including the Doram. Though we still have the extended classes, but that's for the future. So I have here two categories for the tier list. The first one will be the PvE and the second one is for the PvP. I will be ranking every build for each classes so you will have your own preference. But please do keep in mind that these are all based on my opinion and I do respect if you don't agree with me. So let's get on to the first part, the PvE. PvE consists of MVP, raids and grinding so keep that in mind. The first class will be the Rune Knight. Rune Knights are one of the best class in the game and one of the easiest to play. Having a melee damage that can also do mid-range damage is a great feature for a class. However, their builds in PvE separates them from the rankings. For RK Sword build, I'll put them on the A tier. But for the Spear, maybe higher than B but I can also put them on the A since their grinding is terrible. So let's just put them on the B tier. Next is the Warlock. This class has been the strongest class before Dorum and also has one of the best Vero scores to have. However, the Ghost build really lacks AoE as well as DPS. So most players are just sticking with the Elemental build as it can do AoE and has more damage on it. For the Elemental Warlock, it's definitely an S tier. And for the Ghost build, it's a C tier. Ghost build can't benefit with the Elemental Insight Vero score and also it can perform well in grinding which makes this build very underwhelming. Next one is the mechanic. This class has 3 builds and each of them has their strong points. The cart build in my opinion is the strongest and the easiest one to use. However, their only weakness is dealing with fire type enemies because their cart smash along with their overheat buff is a forced fire element damage. They could easily be one of the best hard hitting class on fighting boss monster but the forced fire element damage ruined it. That is also why I will rank cart mechanic in the A tier. This build is also good for grinding but there is a mechanic build that is much more better on that matter and that is the Fao Silver Sniper build. This build is one of the best in terms of grinding but when it comes to fighting boss monsters, it turned out to be a mediocre. That is because of getting your timed up third installation before hovering in your Silver Sniper. It's not really that bad but having yourself doing the third installation every time the Silver Sniper ends is kinda annoying unlike the cart build which you can just auto AFK. But, Silver Snipers don't have any forced elemental damage, so you can use elemental converters or scroll anytime you want. That makes them also an A tier. Madagear Mechanic has the worst DPS out of the 3 builds because this build only excels in PvP. Their grinding capability is also bad, so I'll just put the Madagear Mech on the trash. Next, we go to my favorite job class which is the Ranger. Ranger has been buffed so many times after its slumber days. Good thing players have seen the light of this class and it turned out to be better as buff patches go by. With the recent attack speed buff for sniping ranger, it became so much better and now became the best class in terms of grinding. It can easily farm 3 spots at the same time. Their boss fight is also not bad anymore considering some of their skill animation and cooldown has decreased. So if I may rank this sniping ranger in PvE, I'd consider them in the A tier. For the ward build, I think it's still the best for boss fights than sniping. However, this build lacks on grinding so I'll just put them on the B tier. Next is the Archbishop. This might be a hot take for me since two builds are very different from each other. One is DPS and the other one is support. But let's talk about the Divine Rat build first. Their grinding is okay. But you need to invest more in this build for you to one-shot mobs with Radiant Shock or else you will use Magnus for an additional skill damage. Their boss fight is kind of underwhelming in terms of DPS and there's a lot of effort in manual playing for you to achieve their max DPS. So for me, Divine Rat Archbishop is C tier. The full support build however is very needed in parties. So you can't go wrong with this class build but it takes a lot of effort for you to utilize the skills properly for your team. This build is purposely used for boss fights and PvP so they don't have one for grinding. But still, Archbishop full support is one of the best class and it's easy S tier for me. 
Guilt in Cross on this current patch is becoming underwhelming because there are better options for melee classes. Now that Shadow Chaser is already out and has better DPS output, GX has been out of the meta for quite some time. Qatar build is the better option for grinding as it has some AoE skills, but they are outperformed with the other build that is dual dagger in terms of boss fights. However, both builds are currently not in a good spot, so I'll just put them on the C tier. Next we have the first 3-2 class, the Shura. This class on the release was very underwhelming. Both builds are bad and the Shura presence of being a one-shot one kill became a meme in this game. The 5 seconds charging time kills their kit and there are no recent buffs on this class for the past few patches, which I think the developers gave up already. For this matter, I think the combo master has better DPS output than the Hell's Gate, but nonetheless, both of these builds should be put into the trash tier. Next is the Royal Guard that is also released along with the Shura. This class is also a meme. The War God is very underperforming and it lacks damage output along with their weak ass grinding. However, the other build which is the tank has a better reputation for its role, but I think they are still not in a good spot for forming a party. So in this case, Wargad build is on the trash tier, then tank build will be a little higher, C tier. Next one is Sorcerer. This class is one of my favorite class because of the auto attacking build. When built correctly, Sorcerer autocast out damages Warlock, but the only downside is they lack AoE unlike Warlocks. Grinding is okay, not really that smooth, but when fighting boss monsters, they shine very well. So I'll put the autocast Sorcerer in the S tier along with the Elemental Warlocks. The Mana Overload build is quite mediocre when compared to Autocaster. This build is also a single target and it only deals AoE after the burst buff is activated. Which for me is bad if compared to Elemental Warlocks. The damage is also not that great, so in this case I'll put the Mana Overload on the B tier. Wander and Maestro had their ups and downs after the release. It was a really great semi-DPS healer after the developers fixed the healing stacks. It's still good however, the only downside is the support build. It's lacking in many sense and it can't outperform the Archbishops when it comes to supporting the party. So for the full support capability, I'd rank them in the B tier. For the DPS build, it's kinda mediocre also, but the thing is you can do DPS while healing. So I'll rank this build in the A tier. Next is the newly released class, the Genetic. Genetics were in a mixed situation of role as of this moment. They don't deal that much damage but they can be handy on a large scale PvP. But in PvE, they do lack in DPS, even with the engineering build and those random ruptures don't help. So I'd put them on the B tier. Maybe higher but I can't also put them on the A tier because their main skill damage is a forced fire element. Botany build is not a DPS, however they do have better AoEs for grinding but this may take a lot of investments to be more effective. So still, this build is a trash tier for me. Next is the Shadow Chaser. This class is one of the best class now with the melee form build or the masquerade. They are okay in grinding and have a lot of damage on their kit. It is one of the best class now that can go head to head with a physical build Dorum, so it's an S tier. For the Auto Shadow spell build, they can also do great in farming if you copy the best AoE MVP skill. And I think the Baphomet Lord of Vermilion is what the best to use for this situation. DPS wise, this build is also good. Not really the best in terms of boss fights, but it can deliver. In this case, I'll put the Shadow spell build on the A tier. Magic type Doram has been very underwhelming. It has been forgotten because of how good the physical type Doram is in terms of god tier DPS. But for grinding, this build outshines the physical build as it can clear mob spots easier. So in terms of its overall performance in PvE, I'd rank them in the B tier. The physical build may be lacking in terms of grinding, but the DPS they can deliver is what they really excel at. They are also range and have that huge OP AoE. So for this one, I'd still rank them on the S tier. Moving on, let's discuss the PvP. For Rune Knights, the sword build may be much tankier as they can wield shield, but in terms of damage and AoE, I think the spear build may be better choice. Sword type is just so good overall, so I'd put them on the A tier. Then for the spear build is also A tier, because spear build, regardless of having a higher damage AoE, is only good at large scale PvP like Guild League or War of Imperium. 
For the Warlocks, the Elemental build is still great, OP in terms of Virus Core Elemental Insight that can negate element armor and make them vulnerable to your skills. So it's still an S tier for me. The Ghost build, however, even if they are lacking on AoE, has a good spot when doing PvP fights. Their Large Circle Domain can be one of good use for crowd control, and they can somehow burst down a single target opponent. So for this matter, I'll put them on higher rank. Not as great as Elemental build, but they can be useful for some time. So for me, an A tier will be respectable. Next is Mechanics. I had fun using the cart build for PvP, even though it is easy to counter with Pasana card. Though it's very strong, but it's still a melee class that uses two-handed weapon, which we know that type of class is squishy. Comparing it with the Rune Knight that can wield a shield and do mid-range damage, with higher mobility, makes this class turn bad. So B tier. The Silver Sniper, however, is a better choice for PvP as it can move while attacking with a long range. It also is really strong in terms of dealing damage so this one is an A tier for me because the only downside is the turret installing. Madagear is the best mechanic build when doing PvP. It is very tanky and can deal decent amount of damage while also doing crowd controls. Not really best overall when compared to other classes but they can still deliver. So yeah, A tier. Next is Ranger. The sniping build will outshine the warg build in terms of PvP by a lot. Because Warg build only deals single target damage and the worst part is it's a melee. While sniping can do AoE damage from afar and it can stun targets in a line which is more helpful for the team. So for this one, sniping takes the A tier and then the Warg will be on the C tier. Archbishop is an easy S tier for the full support build. You can't go on a PvP without a full support class on your party as you will struggle really hard. Archbishop is still the best support and no one can replace it. Divine Rat on the other hand is mediocre if compared to other magic type classes. So I put them on the C tier. For the Guillotine Cross, the Qatar build is the most used build for PvP as it can sometimes burst an enemy. However, this build lacks damage and cannot compare to the new meta which is the Shadow Chaser. So for this one, GX Qatar will be on the B tier. While the dual dagger is quite expensive to build because it has two weapons and still deals low amount of damage so I'll put them on the trash can. Shura is still on the same spot just like their PvE performance. Still no good buffs. So I'll put them on the trash tier. Gate of Hell can't even break the PvP wards which really drops down their potential of one-shotting enemies. And the combo master is a joke. Royal guards might have a shot at being a tank in PvP. The tank build is much more useful on shielding allies as well as doing crowd controls. So for me, RG tank is an A tier, while the Wargod build is a trash tier as they can't do anything. Just stay away from this build if you can. Sorcerer now is one of the deadliest class with the autocast build as they can melt the enemy shield and HP with ease, faster than Warlocks. Sorcerer autocast is also the meta class so they have a spot in the S tier. While I can't see many players using the Mana Overload for PvP because it feels underwhelming compared to Autocaster. So Mana Overload is a B tier for me. Wanderer and Maestro is also great. They can support allies as well as doing DPS in PvP. Not really that high in terms of damage but to have a semi support on the party is really great. So I'll put them on the A tier. The full support is kinda lacking for me and it's not as great as the Archbishop so I'll put them on the C tier. You better be going semi DPS if you are using Wanderer Maestro in my opinion. And if you want to be a full support then just go Archbishop. Next is the genetics. Even they do have lack of damage, they can still support their allies with unbreakable armor. They can also break enemies armor with their skills and can also do crowd controls. So for this matter, the engineering build is gonna take the B tier. Those random rupture will also be countered with an enemy genetic and some potions while the botany is much better at supporting allies as well as dealing crowd controls and healing. So I'll put them much higher versus the engineering. Shadow Chaser like what I've said is one of the top tier DPS with the Masquerade build. They may not have shield equipment but they have a counter instinct which prevents them from taking more damage. So with this, Shadow Chaser is still on the S tier. Auto Shadow spell is not really that OP but they are ranged so in my opinion, Shadow spell is a B tier. And for the last one is the Doram. This class is still solid even with a Sorcerer and Shadow Chaser meta. 
The only downside of Physical Doram compared to these two new meta classes is the forced neutral damage. Not really that of a big deal since they still do a lot of damage. So for me, Physical Doram is still an S tier. Magic Doram is mediocre, lesser damage, no good crowd controls whatsoever. So that's my tier list for this year's Ragnarok Origin with a complete third job classes. If you have any comments or reactions regarding my tier list, feel free to do so. Just do not be toxic as we all have different opinions. And also your opinion matters to this community. So keep that comment in a professional manner. As always, thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe to my channel. Stay safe and have an awesome day. Lights out.